Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. Hi. And you have a beard since last week. Is that No Shave November thing going on? Yeah, no, I actually have an audition for Toreador, and so I need to butch it up. <laughs> Wait, you're going to be in Carmen? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, exactly. Me and Karen Chen. <laughs> and they need to audition you? You don't know Carmen? Do they know who you I are, mean, Jonathan? I mean, I'm just saying. Don't they know who I think I am? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's better than those, that's, you know, we, I'm going to have to go watch those two gay men fawning over Katarina Vitt in that special that Sandra mm-hmm. directed. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I would like Sandra to direct me in Carmen. That would be oh, nice. Oh, dear. I'm auditioning for the Brian Orser role. (laughs) Have you ever seen her TV special, A Passion Escaped? It's very Sandra, and she's like, we enjoyed our time in Spain, choreographing with local gypsies. Like, and it's, her voice is like so elegant. Yeah. The big story from there was that's when um, the Berlin Wall came down. Yes. Right? That's what I associate that with. Yes, and like Berlin... And the, uh, what was it called back when Cup of China occurred in Germany? The Nation's Cup, which was oh, also yes. an awful Grand Prix. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> where did it place? Because it wasn't in Oberstdorf. So where did, where did it, it was... Um, maybe Linda Frediani's favorite city of Dortmund. Oh, maybe. Dortmund, yes. It was, always, it was always the third event. It was always terrible. Butchaskaya always won. That's what I remembered of it. it Need was, you say more. Yeah. It was okay. usually the event where, because back in the day, skaters used to compete at three Grand Prix events, and they and they would designate two to be scoring. Rather, right. It was so stupid, rather than just taking Yeah, Michelle time. was winning like 10 of them, and they didn't even count towards her point total or remember whatever. remember she yeah. won two in 97, but because she hurt her foot at the second one, and it was her designated non-scoring, she was supposed to have to go to NHK, she made the final. Anyway, stupid things, but yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You could make Mm -hmm. a lot of money back in the day. Right? For not being that good. For being Butruskaya and doing that move where she would get on the back of her blades and kind of lose her balance. And then it'd be like... And that was in 17 Moments of Spring. It was quite the choreographic moment, if you remember. (laughs) Look it up. She's laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah, that's what she did. Laughing all the way to the bank. (laughs) This felt like that for me. I mean, Jonathan, can we just go through the roster of ladies that we had to sit through? Now, I know that... I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed it. I was intrigued. I wasn't. All right. So <laughs> many people. Rydia Nova. Mm-hmm. Tumtumisheva. Mm-hmm. Gabby Daleman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Snoozy <My>. Hara. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, come on. What? I mean, and some of these people have nice qualities, but overall, just the programs this season, what we were sitting through. I was like, they were pretty evenly matched, though. So it was matched. intriguing in that way. Yeah. That's because they had we had the weird results at the Worlds last year. Where the Japanese right. ladies bombed. That's why they were all here. And it was just... Yeah, Cup of China, which was also Japanese nationals. Yes. Or ladies. <laughs> yeah, like, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's just dive in. Once again, Ridinova, Ridionova, Tuktamisheva, neither one has music that I would want to hear in a rink more than once ever, rather than every right. day. Could you imagine having to skate? Who to knew it? Elisabetta was such an accordion fan? Yes. What is... <laughs> Both programs. Or as they call it, El Bandeon, right? Is that how we make it sound? <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, you keep telling yourself that. It's an accordion. <laughs> yeah. An accordion, and here's the thing. Let's start with Tuktamisheva while we're on that right. subject. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did a triple axel turned out of it? That was all you needed to see. You could turn the YouTube clip off, right? Although she did do a beautiful Rosano, triple toe, triple yeah. toe, for those who are new uh, to this Great triple lutz. Good triple Great lutz. Triple. But yeah. really with her, I think her career really just, it could have ended after she wore the beautiful Moo in all of the various colors. And had beautiful the Moo that's like an oxymoron. <laughs> okay. It was the height of fashion and her career, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. After that, just... Now, we're almost, nay, to the very, like, point I wanted to make about this whole event, which yes. is perhaps a potential lack of awareness in mm-hmm. certain competitors. All right. I think that, because Mishin came out with that article, he was very upset mm-hmm. uh, about the results, felt like they were favoring people from the East. Um, he said there was an Asian sentiment going yes. on. Yes. Exactly. I have an Asian sentiment because I preferred most of their programs over the Russian programs. That's my sentiment. But um, the fact that like, and we'll get to it with Gabby Mm -hmm. Daleman for sure, Mm -hmm. that some of these people who skated clean-ish really thought they had a medal winning performance when in fact, you're like, well, are you not following the competition? Yeah. You 
do you not know the demands? Like she can't do a triple toe tip, like triple toe and have that be her only combo Yeah, and expect to be a factor, even with the axle. I thought about his comments. Was it really an Asian sentiment here? I don't mm-hmm. think it really was because you had a Russian win, first of all. Uh, yeah. Who, uh, and a generous Russian third place. Yes. So yeah. I really feel it was an evenly matched competition with about six people who did relatively well and little mistakes. Mm-hmm. And Mm -hmm. as usual, not really differentiating in the scores of components, uh, really, you know, it was funny when, so Lori Parker, my favorite judge was judge number eight. And, but you could tell like who she really felt like she liked Marin Honda in the short, but you could tell that because she gave her 0.25 higher in like three of the components and then gave someone like 0.25 lower, but they still stayed within a corridor. So okay. even though they're yeah. ranking them correctly, it's still because the corridor of components is so small and right. the corridor of technical can expand and like like right. the accordion based on the mistakes. Like an accordion. <laughs> yes. It really comes down to technical under this new system because everyone's pretty much getting a boom in the ladies event. You're going to be around an eight if you're at all. Well, and, the, and that's the thing. Like when we were doing our exercises where we were judging components for everybody, we had a lot of fluctuation. You would give someone a 9.25 in one category and a 7.75 in another category because you felt like maybe their skating skills were here, but their performance was lacking. Or they really performed, but they skate on two feet the whole time. Mm -hmm. I think there should be variation within it, but it's kind of just like um, a general across the board kind of feeling. You have to kind of like read between the lines with what the judges are saying with some of this when they're not being overtly political. So it's uh, it's interesting. But as Dick Button said in this wonderful article this week, you cannot have artistry without technique, and you cannot have technique without artistry. And I thought about that for a while. Thanks, Dick. Takes beautiful work. You know, when I'm 88 years old, I hope that Jack Gallagher is calling me up to get my thoughts on the skating. I mean, that for your singers. Yes. Amazing, and it was yeah. the quotes were as fantastic as always. It he, made us miss him. It yeah, really did. He seemed like he was having a good day and good spirits, and yeah. we agreed on about all of the skating. I felt like he would have hated Cup of China as well. So, <laughs> although it was funny that I overall felt the event was distasteful because it really had two of probably the greatest performances that we're going to see with uh, Papadakis and Cizeron and uh, Sway and Han, Sui and Han. However, we're going to say their names, uh, throughout uh, the season. I mean, there were two of the absolute best, and I enjoy Marin Honda, and then the rest, I was like, Mm -hmm. oh, dear. Um, There were hills and valleys for me. It really went skater by skater, and and, um, short program versus long program. Also, there were a couple of moments. Um, Do you remember when Rika Hongo... She wasn't here. (laughs) Skater to the stars, (laughs) when she skated in Boston... Yes. And she did river dance. And uh, one of our friends made that joke where he was like, you know, she thinks she's going to have her Jason Brown moment. Yes. Skating river dance in Boston. And those that were there live were like, she thought she won. She yes. thought she was the world champion when she finished her mm-hmm. program. And so I would like to create a term. Uh, they Rika Hongo'd it. They Rika Hongo'd it. Several yeah. of these women, Gabby, Elisaveta, Elena, they Riona Riona Hongo always. Um, yeah, is she always Rika Hongo's it. <laughs> yes. What did like Annabelle just... Morozov say about her? She's like, yes, she's a very fabulous girl, very fun. She's always at the center of drama, whether she's creating it or just a part of it. Like it was like what <laughs> she's like <laughs> a performer through and through. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, let's get technical, nitty gritty, Dave. Yeah. Talk to me about uh, our friend Radionova's jumps. Can you tell me she lands in that hunchy position? They're squirrely. And why... She's skating it out. I mean, there's usually there's a lot of arms that are going on. Yeah, shoulders yes. are up by her shoulders ears. Are, well, that's cause. I mean, yes. So she don't is... you want to just give her a massage? Just be like, relax. Well, that's okay. how she's trying to get them around because this is what when Jenny was ranting about the Russian arm technique for so many years. The thing is, is that when you jump from your legs, like Wakaba Higuchi, if Wakaba were to go through puberty, she would have a better chance of being able to withstand the changes. the change, okay. Because, Because when you're a young girl and you're overusing your arms, it's really easy to do that technique when you're younger because you're just lifting your body up into the air. 
But as right. your body starts to change, when you lit, it, it's harder. You're not spinning as fast. Therefore, when you when all these little Russians are whipping themselves up at 11 years old and doing triple triple, yeah. that's why yeah. everyone says, well, that's all well and good, but let's see them after puberty. Whereas you don't right. see that with other people in the same way, because if you have a jump like Wakaba or a Tanya Harding or yeah. Midori okay. Ito, they're more sustainable in general. Okay. That's why those ladies don't seem to have, they go into their 20s, you know, on. Whereas well, because she doesn't these... get much air time either, yeah, right? No. Like, she, she comes down pretty quickly and I would assume... It's why if it you... looks like she's on the edge of her career. Yeah. Yeah, like everything, she's landing them, yes. But I'm pretty scared for every single jump. And I would assume, like, in singing, mm -hmm. when you get nervous, your breath goes. Yes. Your, your stomach goes, and then weird things happen as a result of that. And I would assume in skating, it's the knees. The knees. Right? And then your arms so can get tense, too. Like, I'm a person where my shoulders get tense if I have okay. adrenaline, you know, okay. happen. So. so she's, like, compensating with all of this up yes. here. Yeah. And it's you a saw compensatory even thing that she's doing. I mean, yeah. she does jump in practice like that, but in competition it's really it's yeah. kind of unesthetic you remember when yuna would land and it was like just as the toe pick hit the ice it was just so if you, amazing if you've ever watched a a, a, a slow-mo of yuna when they would show her combination i mean you would really see the knee bend that she would get and the leg that would get her up into the air so beautifully and that's why that was such a successful thing for her uh right she also didn't seem to gain a pound throughout her career but uh right. <laughs> you know, she looks you know very she had very very strong technique Rudinova's is uh Radionova's technique is not uh in the same category it's scrappy, it's it's scrappy. scrappy. Yeah. I find that it makes her fun to watch in okay. a way where you know she's never going to win because she's so rough around the edges but mm -hmm. she is exciting to watch and that you really don't know if she's going to land these jumps or fall today uh, right. But it, it could really cost her making the uh, Russian Olympic team. She's on the edge of making it. I mean, if something as crazy is going to happen. You know, there are about five girls in that com in that conversation right now. Maybe six. Yeah. But uh, within Russian politics, it's really unusual that uh, a Terry Tuparitsa would have all three ladies. Especially with Tarasova having long have ties with Buyanova, who coaches right. uh, Satskova and Rodionova. That's the one. That's yeah. the one. Come on. It's, <laughs> okay. <laughs> one of those are going to make it, unless Mishin pulls this off with Tuktamisheva, if she does like three triple axles and makes it. Uh, that would be uh, the only Yeah, one. but they, that's the thing also with Gabby. Mm -hmm. uh, complete delusion at the end. She was yes. like, with her long press on nails, she was like, this close. And I was like, this close to what? Fifth? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can't do the triple toe, triple toe really anymore because you're robbing yourself of doing the two combos. Here's the thing with Gabby is that I really feel with Rudy, Rudionova, with actually with most of these skaters, but especially with Gabby, um, who doesn't have the strongest skating skills, she doesn't have the strongest edge quality footwork, and that's mm -hmm. really the area of her skating that seems to be a real struggle. The judging system really harms them because they, they're put in a box where they have to do these elements and they have to hit the edges and the turns. And it seems like it's a challenge for them to do and it's a challenge for us to watch. And when you're watching her, she's a skater that skates fast. She's a real athlete. Not I know. I want her on my roller derby team. Yes, right? Like to be she, clear, I do not have a roller derby team. But, but I'm saying see Gabby, like, that's a strong girl. She could make it in bobsled. I think that she could make the Olympic team in the luge. I think that she would be a great gymnast for Canada. She's such a loser. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I could see ski jumping. I could see aerial skiing. I mean, skating doesn't even seem like it's probably her best sport. Uh, yeah. She, a pure athlete, for sure. Yeah. Pure yeah. athlete. Uh, she's like a Midori Ito. You would never want to see Midori Ito try to do a level four step sequence. That would be horrible right. to watch. She needs to fly right. across uh, the ice doing like basically mohawks and three turns and but for being such an athlete you think that maybe she needs to and can rev up the technical content she would need to rev up the technical content uh yeah you know she's someone who really needs a quad she knows she has that great triple trial triple toe i wonder if she could do a quad toe if what? she's going to continue in the future it's interesting because they all do the same elements it's interesting how 
Now that they've mastered the technique for a triple lutz, triple toe, it's really quite boring to watch. We've seen so yep. many of them where, as when someone used to do a triple lutz, triple toe, it was like, oh my good Christie in yeah. 1992. Yeah, yeah like, it was yeah. the coolest thing that we had seen in some time. Right. right. Uh, now we see the dozens of them uh, performed. But that's why when we see the lutz loop, mm -hmm. It's like mind blowing. Yes. Yeah. Like you need a wow factor and she's kind of missing it at this juncture. And your wow factor can't be a triple toe, triple toe anymore. Also, we have to talk about Gabby. I preferred her in the short program versus the free skate because there were less of her. And that's terrible, yeah. but true. Yeah. Um, also, I, Tracy Wilson, Brian, David Wilson, whoever choreographed this, but you all are present and who thought that that Carmen with the shrieky female voice was a good it's idea? So it's so bad. It's it's almost so Is that bad. Lori? Because she's used Lori Nickel in the past, and I'm thinking, what? Well, who thought that this was good? Is that like ring ring? Someone's phoning it in because you don't you don't have much. No, you have to go out of your way to find such a heinous recording, <laughs> in my opinion. I, I mean, I'm serious. Yeah. Like, you would never have done an ancillary like Carmen search on Google. Would never have yielded that result. Yeah. Like, I, I'm sorry. Anyone uh, else could have done it. Also, the, the free skate to Gladiator. Her skating to Gladiator. On the nose, by the way. But yeah. the, the cut was awful. The dress was awful. The skirt was way too long. And it, it seems silly to, like, talk about the outfit. But what it does, the reason she looked better in the short was it was monochromatic. So it yeah. gave her a little more line. And it she's got real dark features. So. Yeah. Yeah. She looked so harsh and severe, mm -hmm. and and even though the music is gladiator, mm -hmm. it is not very gladiatorial <laughs> uh, mu sounding. Mm -hmm. So yeah. she's interpreting like a gladiator, but there's like weird bird sounds, or I don't know what the heck yeah, is going she's on. Using yeah, it's kind of like Moana. It's been a long time since I've seen Gladiator, but she's using like. I think the music that they show, like, after one of the big fights. You know, like, the music where it's, like, going up into the ether. It, like, the, the yeah, it's, it's yeah. not one of the, like, warrior moments. Yeah. And so that's what she should, using, okay? she should be using, okay? She should be going for a triple X, triple toe, and a quad toe using the warrior music. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, and it just, it just shows to me that maybe they're not totally aware of the requirements needed at this juncture. This season took a turn. Yeah. This season feels a little more progressive than last season. Mm. Technically, for the women, yes. you can't get away with the same technical contact. Suddenly over the summer, everything revved up. Well, especially when everyone out does the jumps like this, and we're doing triple X, triple loop. Even Amber Glenn tried that. <laughs> We've got Let's to stop sending... That's when we get to it. Yeah, like, We've just got land to it stop. first before you throw your arms up. <laughs> the canes. I mean, you know how everyone went to the canes? So, all right, Jonathan, in gymnastics... After the 96 Olympics, all of the has-beens and the never wers went to the Cincinnati Gymnastics Academy. But the top fell out of American gymnastics and okay. the bottom started doing well. And it feels like that's what's happening with the Canes. Only we're sending them to international competitions and they're also getting last. I mean, so right. after you remember the Magnificent Seven winning gold, Carrie right. Strug, right? The yep. next year... The team performed about as well at Worlds as the Canes did at this event. Like, this was... Oh, so was... how did they remedy it? Stop going there. Um, <laughs> eventually, they brought Bella Caroli back, is what they did. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. we need to clone Frank, right. set up um, some sort of a, a skating system outside of Palm Give Springs. Give John Nix a youth formula. <laughs> yeah, okay. John Nix and Frank in Palm Springs... Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone can stay at those clothing optional gay resorts, and <laughs> we can uh, okay. just run it right out of there. You know, that's what's easy peasy. Gonna... Yeah, okay. easy peasy. You know, the clothing <laughs> optional wouldn't be bad for skating because it would make everyone want to stay in shape. You know, yeah. it would, yeah. And we're in a golden era of Paris men, so I may visit that resort. <laughs> Many of them have, apparently. Yeah. Um, oh, okay, okay. Well, it's one is owned by a former U.S. judge, so. Yeah. So. Oh, not British. It's not Vanessa Riley. It's okay. not yeah. Vanessa Riley. <laughs> okay. But anyway, I digress. True story, okay. by the way. Talk to me about Zagitava. Uh, I I really enjoy our friend Mark Hanready, who beat both of us in fantasy this week. You did a little bit better than I did by a couple of points. 
Well, how could anyone have predicted this? <laughs> it's like I, the whole thing was all over the place. Is it Zimena? When it's X I M E N A, is it Jimena? Like if it were Espanol, um, it's one of those names where I'm like, Ms. Oh, X. Oh, what's the ethnicity? One. I don't know. Jimena. Is okay. it Jimena? That's what I thought. Like Jimena. Mexico, Mexico. Okay. Mexico, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then Rebecca Jean I was second. Um, wow, how did they guess this? These results were so wackadoodle. You were 30th, they... and Elkin was one point behind you, and I was a couple points behind, but placements, I was 40th. You were 30th. That's because I threw a wrench in my um, man crush. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, did and I didn't point. cheat and look at yours, and dumbass me, because you went with Hotarik when we've spent so much time talking about Guaris. And you I know, you know, in a brief moment, I was like, I'm over the man bun. And I went with Andre. <laughs> but Mateo actually was a very educated guest. Who so. thought that the crush was going to be like the really tough field? Yeah, the really tough. Exactly. And I tried to like, when I designed the answers, I tried to get everyone from every different kind of nationality. And yeah, like every discipline, every gaze, I picked both the tops and the bottoms so that no one would know. <laughs> and you know, yeah, gosh, it was... I tried you, to... get, you really gave the sampler platter there. Yeah, there, were, there were great ones to choose from. It was difficult. It was difficult. Yeah. I know. You know we, you, we, you're a mystery uh, to us. So that's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. The mystery continues. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so... <laughs> okay, so here's my thoughts on Zagitaba. Oh. I just can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I'm teasing. But like, you know what it is? So her short is still a problem, right? So then I was like, why is she having a problem with the short mm. and she can do these like ridiculous things in the long is it really just because she's used to that program or is somehow the jump drill does somehow that make it easier for her it could i also think that she made a fluke error on the on the lutz loop that, i think it was but, just a, like a fluke situation okay uh, the lutz loop did not look as good at this competition as it has other times. She looked more, mm -hmm. a little bit more nervous. Obviously, in the free, she had the error in the short uh, to contend right. with. So I would be interested to see what it looks like at the next competition when she doesn't have the... Okay. Presumably have a mistake on the short. Because usually that's been one of her easiest combinations, and she lands it with inches to spare. Uh, right. But I thought the rotation just was a little closer in the free than it has uh -huh. been uh, in the past. But... Overall, here's the thing, and, and Mark Henretti was going off, and he is, he says he's, what we're he's thinking. Good. I like him. Yeah, he says what we're thinking, and he always watches our show. Hi, Mark. Um, but he was going off. He's like, it's, it's an interesting strategy that the Russians are using, putting her in these ballet costumes. He's like, uh, some would argue that it's to make her look like a senior lady. And, and some would say, and I'm like, here, mm -hmm. um, yeah, me, that's uh, correct. That yeah. it makes her glaringly look more junior, you know, basically. And to He's me, right. it's Halloween costume choreography. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard when they, when they say like, well, she's, she's not a black swan like Osmond, whereas Os I also think black swan is a bad choice for Osmond. I'm thinking, right. when I think of a, Someone who's successfully done a ballet program, I'm thinking Yinnick, Cohen, Bayul, these girls that had extension and really looked like they were doing the Soviet ballet training at the they bar. They finished the movements. Yeah. It was from the tips of the fingers to the tips of the toes. And she's like Zagita was all arms. All arms and hunchy. And not hunched. Yeah. Dick Button would be screaming about her posture, like in a Slitskaya -like type way. The thing is, is that it's it's skating, and after reading the Dick Button article, and it's become so convoluted that, and they're trying to get the GOEs. Although it's really unclear how the judges are really, if they're really awarding this or not. But in theory, they're doing all of these, you know, the bracket to the counter, to um, putting the leg over your head before the jump, to right. putting then doing a charlotte, and it's all well and good, except it has nothing to do with the music, and it's like. It's gymnastics on ice. It's contortion on ice before we get right. even into the double axle. That... The only cool one she does, mm -hmm. she does that arm out at the end of the flip. And I'm always like, ah, oh. <laughs> like, it's very powerful to me. But the rest you say, it, it's it's garnering the points, but mm -hmm. it looks cluttered. And they even mentioned it on the Eurosport category where they were talking about, well, like, this jump just only has, you know, flow out of it. She's just riding a nice edge after the jump instead of immediately doing something else for extra points. And I was mm -hmm. like... But that's the problem. I yeah. don't want to see her do something cluttered afterwards. I want to see that like gorgeous like ride out in the edge. 
it feels dirty to me. Dirty is a good word for it. Yeah. Not like as if it is not her fault. It's the way the sport is yeah. moving and it's the way that, but to me, it's, it's the same reason of why, you know, when something's excessively done for the points rather than to create an aesthetic thing, you know, something's really happened to skating in a bad way over yeah. the last 10 years where we've gone completely from any aesthetics to trying to make it so mathematical and it's so distasteful to me what's happening. Granted, with that said, she is my dark horse pick to win the Olympics. And I know that that's supposed to be sacrilegious to say anyone else other than Medvedeva or Hanyu will win. But we have seen so many times that the young upstart with the jumps, the Nathan Chen, the Zagitova, has a mm -hmm. far easier time at the Olympics when they don't have the pressure of the other person. Of and course. They can just be aggressive. Yeah. 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 Um, we've seen so many Olympic battles where... And it doesn't mean you want her to win. You know, it's my pick. It means you I could foresee cool. it happening. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Um, and I also think the French have the momentum when we get into that conversation. Uh, and it's we're splitting, like, tenths of a point here, but... Uh, right. Um, that bobble on that, on that twizzle by Tessa, they would have been the first ones to get the 200 and had that branding, but now they're not, and... The French are like going viral on Facebook as we speak. Yeah. Euros, yeah. yeah. It's like, I want to be responsible for it. I want to be, <laughs> I'm clicking share, share, share. <laughs> but but uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. yeah okay. But the, I think Zagitova has a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. I would be nervous if I were Medvedeva growing. Because the thing is, is that Zagitova jumps a little bit more with her legs than Medvedeva does. She gets a little bit more height on some of the jumps. The flip. You know, she does everything with the rapan. And it looks a little bit like she really is getting that extra height from doing this. Right. Um, whereas others, they're just throwing an arm over your head and it's like an adult skater throwing an arm up. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like when, when Maria was doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, I guess I'll do this because I'm supposed to do this. This is like Brian Boitano getting that real oh my lift. That was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. what it can look like. Yeah. Um, Zagitova, as much as I don't like the programs and as much as I don't think that she ever has a turned out foot or balletic movement really pointed in... toe finished yeah. arm yeah and it's so funny because the russians that will comment on this will say i think zagitov is a wonderful key tree and it's just because she's russian and wearing a red tutu does not make her key tree uh by the way um, it sure doesn't yeah exactly yeah go look up natalia zipova and then we'll talk about a key tree all right yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know what? Finishing those movements, having that extension, it takes time. And it's yeah. time she doesn't allow for in that program. No. She can't fully extend, you know, any of her free legs if she already has to be on to the next transitional movement. So I also find the choreography just not very aesthetically pleasing either. I just, oh. especially uh, the step sequences. And when, even when she's like down in the knee slide, which is a cool idea to see someone change planes like that in skating. I just don't love it. It, it really reminds me of when uh, Proklova did this program as a, as a junior uh, a number of years ago. She was a young girl, skated uh, with Ina Goncharova, with uh, Runionova. She was like wearing the same tutu costume. It was the same program. Right. It was the same thing. Uh, and then Medvedeva wore the same tutu, but she skated to Belarus, I think. So, but it's all the same program. We've seen this from the Russian ladies a million times. We've seen your bag right. of tricks, Terry. Yeah, um, yeah. This is... But they're still working, so why would they change them? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the dilemma. Um, but I still would have had Wakaba ahead in both, both portions of the event. So, I... Wakaba is not my usual girl. Me but... neither, but she kind of changed my mind. She's got a power to her. And she's delivering now consistently, which is interesting because she was the one that theoretically cost them the three spots, and she's right. making a comeback uh, for this Olympic team. And they seem to be liking her in Japan. Uh, the Federation, I think, has been really... I talked to a woman uh, named Akiko, who is a big Japanese uh, journalist. I don't read Japanese, so I haven't read her things, but she's, I, know, I understand that she's a very knowledgeable uh, Japanese journalist. And she was saying that... Um, you know, the Federation wants to give Satoko as much time as possible. There's a lot of respect for her there. But she thinks that once Satoko is, if she does pull out, you know, the season or if she's unready to go, that they probably 
maybe Marin Honda will have more affection for her afterwards. Commercially, she thinks right. the TV would love Marin Honda to go, but these two are being so consistent right now. And Wakamba right. is making herself more and more of a contender. Uh, I could have seen her winning this event. It, it's hard when Zagitova's winning everything because it's back-loaded, but to me, I, can, I think in the components, you really have to deduct, especially for the transitions. I think that it, it's terrible when you back And it's, we remember when we went through all those PCS requirements, it's about balance. Yeah. So how, how can you say it's balanced? I just don't understand. The thing is, we know Wakaba has that triple axel. Okay. We know she practices it, and the people who have seen it were like, oh, it'll blow your mind. It's I, like worries. I think that she will probably put it in. She should put it in. She could win the Olympics if she put it in. Well, uh, that's why if you were doing that, though, this is the interesting like Save strategy. it for the final. Save it for the final. Create that consistency now, mm -hmm. and then insert it in the final. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because otherwise... Yeah, I tempted to try it as many times as I could, but if she's trying to establish exactly what she's achieving, which is really leading leading lady status, that makes sense too. By the way, yeah. there have been skaters in the past, like Sasha Cohen, who didn't want to make the final, who pulled out of one of their Grand Prix events to kind of not make the final and to, to preserve the their time. bodies. But you Because you don't want to peak at the final and you don't want to lose the final. So right. you don't want to lose the final, like skating your best, doing as well as you can, and still get and getting hosed by the judges. So you want to, if she, it would take all the pressure off to go there. And if she does poorly, they can always just say, well, she did poorly because she was putting in the triple axel. And that's so much harder. And that changes okay. everything. Okay. And if she does well, it's you just landed a triple axel at the Grand Prix final. And yeah. you have a Nathan Chen moment where it propels you for the rest of the year to Absolutely. doing a really good job, I, I, th I would put it into the final. That's what I would do. Okay. Um, really make a name and make it so that it's not necessarily just Russia 1-2 automatically. Really? Right. Yeah. yeah. Throw a wrench in it. That's what I would... That's my strategy, Jonathan. That's, I like it. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm in. I'm in. Just like that Suzanne, you know? Ugh. You love your Suzanne. She's too skinny. <laughs> Suzanne, no. We're talking about Suzanne Yachlin of, of gymnastics. But anyway, moving moving along. Yeah, but Wakaba, though, I'm, I'm liking the power. She's changing my mind slowly. Yeah, I'm really becoming a fan. And you know what? She It's a learning curve for them, too. Mm -hmm. Scheherazade last year, right? Horrible. And it, it was kind of like, oh, gosh. But then, you know what? They knew it, too. Yes. So they were like, next year, we'll we'll change it. And they did. And it was it's kind of a big success. Yeah. So, uh, so Mai Mihara. Who? Uh, yeah, I know. It's funny. She's has so many lovely qualities, but not she, the you X can't factor. say she's doing anything wrong because you cannot yeah. teach X factor. No, she just doesn't have it. Although she has a lovely, delicate quality, she really is their Angela Nikodinoff, where yeah. you're like, ooh, you're just missing that extra little spark. But mm -hmm. very consistent. Uh, does her job well prepared and if we Lovely. had her the u.s would die to have her they would love oh, no it no kidding yeah, yeah we'd give her everything yeah we'd give her the world <laughs> yeah so yeah but she just lacks that that extra little spark but it is traditionally the great champions in skating have had that extra little spark and it's not fair you can't teach it you can't mm -mm. um but if you look over time there's Katerina Vitt just said it's something. You know? Just had it. It didn't yeah. matter. Yeah. <clears throat> and many very generically lovely people mm -hmm. do their job and it's wonderful and they're just, they just, you don't remember them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, sometimes you're just Stephanie Westerfeld and you're not Laurent So and you just didn't have it. Okay. <laughs> Hello, let me pull out my history book. <laughs> you know, Laurence cheated that double axel, and it didn't matter, Jonathan. She she made the cover of Sports Illustrated. That's Stephanie right. Westerfeld okay. never did. All right. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, so, after reading that Dick Button article, mm -hmm. I rewatched Magic Memories on Ice, Jonathan, and it felt like... Which we love. I owned all the volumes on VHS. So, yeah. I always owned volume two which by the way the commercial seemed really good for it right yeah and it's um it's, it's like an Vitt. Wait, what is Katarina Vitt skating to it's one of those it's from that musical about it's like about AIDS or something or gays or something and uh 
Or is she doing the bad exhibition? Or is she skating? No, in Magic Memories on Ice Volume 2, she is skating something to that, to a show. There's some connection here. Uh, But whatever. She's doing it, and it's Christy skating to Pretty Woman uh, before she was Sandrified. And uh, it was a bunch of other loveliness. But um, you get to see Dick, basically. If you want to hear Dick Button love someone... Him watching John Curry during the oh the, the god 70s. of course yes he's like what a tremendous performance this is yeah in the monkey him. suit that they know yes <laughs> yeah um, hmm. and remember you and know remember, wait here's a little Im- bit of information no one wants to know right. the audition for the Carmen mm. that I'm doing on Tuesday is in Innsbruck. Oh. Enter John Curry. Enter John Curry, Dorothy yeah. Hamill, 76 uh-huh. Olympics, and... Linda also... Fratiani in that Bob Mackey gown. Yes. <laughs> and okay. wasn't it also... Weren't the 64 games there, too? They yeah, repeated it was, it was repeat. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, so Magic yeah. Memories and Ice Volume 1, I shared the link on our Facebook. Watch it. It's a good Dick Button time. It's incredible. It, it, but what it did is it taught so many viewers mm. when we were young, like it exposed us to Janet Lynn. And, and it the history us. of the fine art of figure skating, as Dick said. It's true, though.